In this lecture, we are going to talk about introductory concept in programming. First, we will discuss why programming is an important concept. Second, we'll discuss the structure of a program and its basic instruction. So what does it actually do? Next, we'll talk about debugging and trying to find error in your code. So those are typically syntax and semantic errors that we're going to try to find. Next, we'll talk about data values and data types. So for instance, string, float, integers, Boolean, list, dictionaries, and tuples. We'll give plenty of examples on strings, lists, and dictionaries. And we'll also explain how we can go from one data type to another and vice versa. We'll also learn about assignment statement or how we assign a value to a variable. And about variables, we'll discuss how we name them and uh, best practice here uh, on naming conventions. Next, we'll talk about PEMDAS or uh, the order of operations. Multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, parentheses, exponent. There is a specific order that needs to be followed. And finally, we will discuss how you best comment your code, which is very important for transparency and the ability to reuse your code by others. We may ask ourselves, why programming? Well, one of the most important skills for computer scientists is problem solving. Why? Because in problem solving, you learn how to formulate problems. You learn how to think creatively about solution. How are we going to get to the solution of this particular problem? And then you express the solution clearly. So in general, learning programming is going to help you practice problem solving skills. So the next question that comes to mind is, what is a program? We can think of a program as a sequence of instructions that specifies how to perform a computation, for instance. And what could that computation be? Well, it could be a simple mathematical function. For instance, you summing up values. You can be, for instance, uh, having a function that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius or pounds to kilos. You can also do a simple computation where you're trying to sort through an entire database. Or you can do, for instance, search and replace. Now we're going to see how a program can be thought about in the form of a flowchart. So a program can be visualized as a flowchart where we have an input, we have a computation that happens to that input, and then we, of course, get an output. So what could the input be? That could be data from a keyboard. For instance, you enter data. Um, it could, the data could also come from a file, like a text file or a, maybe an Excel file. The output uh, could also be a file, but could also be data that is displayed on the screen. The computation, as we have uh, just talked about earlier, those are typical mathematical uh, functions and so on. Um, sometimes we uh, find ourselves uh, with the need to perform the, an action many, many times. So as an example, let's suppose you have an Excel file with temperature that are in Fahrenheit and you need to convert those to Celsius. Well, you're going to go row by row and you're going to apply a function, right? So then you repeat and that is why we use loop as we will talk about later uh, this semester. And um, next you have conditional execution. That is, um, we're going to check for a specific condition. If that condition is met, then we're going to apply the uh, code accordingly. And the code, of course, is the computation. So that sort of forms, if you want, the structure um, of a program. An important component in programming is the ability to find errors in your code. That is actually called debugging. And essentially what you're going to try to do is, like a detective, you're going to try to identify places where there might be errors in your code. Now, sometimes Python will actually point to those lines of codes where there might be an error. You're going to try to modify the code and then try to run it again and see if it actually um, returns what you're expecting it to return. There are two types of errors, syntax errors and semantic errors. Uh, syntax errors, so there is a problem with the syntax. Maybe there is a parenthesis that is missing. Maybe there is a plus sign that is missing and things of that nature. So here clearly we can see, for instance, we wanted to put a is equal to 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, uh, but we're missing a parenthesis here. So that would have been a syntax error, and Python would point to that line. A semantic error, that is harder to find because essentially the code runs, so there's not actually a problem, but the um, uh, value that are returned, the output, is not exactly what you expected. So for instance, you may have used um, maybe uh, integer instead of using a float, and then the values are rounded too much. Uh, that's not what you expected. So those are harder to uh, detect. 
It is important to give a little bit of definition about values and variables in Python. A value typically is a number, a digit, or a text, a string. Uh, rarely uh, there would be special uh, characters. They are rarely used. Of course, uh, they are used uh, in operations, but uh, they don't really have any value per se. Um, a value is then assigned to a variable. A variable is actually a name that holds that value. So for instance, we can have a variable here that I've put in purple called name. And then that, um, the, the value here, this is a text, right? It's Eric, that's the value. And that, that is assigned to that variable. Uh, another example, you have uh, the number uh, 43 here, that's my age, and that's assigned to a variable called age. Uh, and likely here, three, the number of sisters, is assigned to a variable called num sisters. So that's very important to understand the value, the variable, and then the process of assigning the value to the variable. I'd like to give a little word about variable expression and statement. Generally, you assign a value to a variable. So a variable, in a way, holds a value. The assignment is done with the equal sign. So for instance, I can have a variable uh, in, um, called named, uh, and then it's equal. That's the assignment, uh, Eric. Uh, Eric is a string here. One thing that is very important in Python, um, the variable are case sensitive. So something that you see like this, capital letters name, is different than lowercase, and it's even different than name here with a first capital letter. Generally, there are some important naming conventions. You want to try to use a variable that makes sense, that's trying to actually describe something, not just a random, uh, random name. So for instance, um, you could use um, Table field names, Eric num sisters for the number of sisters, things like that. Okay. One thing that is important: the first word is always lowercase. The second word here should the first letter should be capital letter, and so on and so forth. So you capitali capitalize successive words. Finally, when you try to find a name for a variable, you're trying to avoid uh, spaces and special characters like forward backslash percent and other uh, characters of that sort because Python really does not work well with those characters. Something important in Python of course are data types. So um, they are uh, generally two big families. You have numbers and you have text uh, but there are also other data types such as list, dictionaries, tuples, uh, to name a few and we'll get back to those later. Um, so first I want to clarify numbers. So you have typically two types of numbers you can have either integer, so those are whole numbers, or you can have uh, float, and those are decimal uh, numbers. So just to give you an example, um, I have a variable here called Eric age, and I uh, assign a value of 43.5, um, which is about my age, uh, to, that, um, to that variable. Now, if I was looking to know what was the type of that variable, uh, what I would do, I would say type in Python, and I would uh, open the parentheses here and put the name of the variable and that would return then a uh, float. Now um, in order to go from a float to an integer you can call this um, built-in function uh, int for integer. Uh, between the brackets you put the variables that is a float and then uh, that would return you 43 which is an integer. And same thing here if you were to say type and to put the name of the variable that would return integer. The other family are strings and uh, or text. Uh, so for instance here uh, I have a variable called name. Uh, this is text because it's between uh, quotation. Uh, I assign the value Eric uh, to name uh, and then that would of course be a string. So if you put here type of name it will return you str for string. Okay. Um, it is possible uh, to go from text to numbers by using the function int or float and this is quite useful when you have for instance a text file uh, that contains of course a lot of text value but those actually refer to numbers and you want to let's say import them in Excel or something or, or just do some computation with it you would use integer or float depending on what they are. A last one is um, type boolean that's quite useful for conditional statement as we'll see talk more about those later um, and typically those will return true or false so uh, if I look for instance and I'm asking is the, the letter E in name, now name we had defined it before as Eric, that would be true, the, that's actually the first letter. And so um, what it would return you uh, to you uh, is, uh, is true.
I'd like to show an example now about string concatenation. I have a, a few variables. Uh, string one uh, is assigned the value hello. String two is assigned the value world. And so we can see here. Um, so this is done in uh, PyCharm, but we'll, we can easily do this in Google Collaboration Collaborator. Uh, string one hello. String two here uh, equal to world. Okay. Um, and then. Um, if we do, uh, let's say, uh, string uh, three is equal to string one plus string two, okay, and we say print string three, this is what you would get. So this is the uh, uh, example of uh, concatenation. We use the uh, plus sign. And if we were to do, for instance, here, print, let's say, red plus string tree, we would have red, hello world. You can see the word red has been concatenated or added to hello world here. An important data type in Python are lists. And lists can be thought of a sequence of elements that are enclosed together with square brackets. So let me give you a couple of examples. You can create uh, a list here of uh, numbers. So I've put here numbers 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, or you can create a list here with uh, names. So this, in this case, those are uh, strings, of course. Um, you can see that each element is separated by a comma. So let's take an example here of a list of uh, cheese, of a uh, family of cheese. Um, so this is a variable called cheese, OK? Um, and we have four different kinds of cheese that we want to put in our list. Cheddar, Adam, Gouda, and Brie. Okay? So as you can see, there are a total of four elements. So if I call the function length, which is a built-in function in Python, and put the name of the variable between the brackets here, then uh, between the parentheses, it tells me it's equal to four. Now, it's something that is quite important uh, when we use uh, both strings and lists, in fact, uh, is the, um, the indexing. And the indexing in Python, unlike many other packages, or programming uh, package, start with uh, zero, at zero, sorry. So cheese zero would point to cheddar, cheese one would point to Adam, cheese two, good at cheese three, brie. And you can see we don't go all the way to four, but zero, one, two, three are four elements. One other thing here, um, you can have um, use this uh, 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 colon here, uh, cheese uh, two to the colon, that would be cheese from position two all the way to the end. So that's position zero, position one, position two, two to the end. That would then return me the elements Gouda and Brie. We'll come back later, of course, and make more exercise on list. But this is really uh, the basic, and it's extremely powerful uh, also when you read and write to text file, for instance. All right, I'm going to show a couple of examples here about um, list and concatenation uh, for list. So here uh, we have a variable called cheese. This is a list that contains the name of some cheeses, as you can see. Um, so let's suppose that uh, we have this list here, cheese. So I'm going to put it here and run it, so cheese. And then I would essentially do cheese plus, and here I would have another list. And let's say there's another cheese here uh, called mozzarella, for instance. Oh, sorry about that. Hope the spelling is okay. And I want to add it. And now you can see uh, what the resulting uh, list is. Cheddar, Gouda, Eden, Brie, and mozzarella. What if now I wanted to concatenate uh, two lists together? For instance, let's say we have Eric friends here. OK, that's a list. Uh, we have Amy friends here. That is also a list. And what if we were to do Eric friends plus Amy friends? And then we would have a union of both so John, Rod, Bob, and me, Nick, and Luke uh, being uh, the concatenated group. Uh, it's a union. Now, another thing I'd like to show briefly, although we haven't really talked about for loops yet, um, is um, you can, in fact, uh, enumerate all the elements of a list, right? Remember, a list is made out of elements. Uh, here, for instance, 
uh, for all the elements in cheese, print each element. Uh, wait a second here. Cheese is here, print elements. Okay, and then if I pull this down a little bit, uh, you can see that uh, every cheese has been uh, printed. But interestingly enough, mozzarella is not part of this. And in fact, this is quite interesting uh, because uh, when you concatenate, um, like I've done before, so when I do cheeses um, plus mozzarella, for instance, right? Uh, what it does, it creates this sort of temporary list. Um, so when I do mozzarella here, right, it prints it out, but if I uh, call the variable cheese, it's mozzarella is not part of it. So if you wanted mozzarella to be added to that list, you would actually need to create another list. So for instance, you would call it um, something like this. Uh, and you would say, for instance, cheeses, B is equal to this, and then when you call it cheeses, B, you can see now that mozzarella is actually part of it. Okay. All right, I'd like to show a couple of examples here uh, how we go from a uh, string uh, to a list and, um, and then how we can bring a st string into words. Uh, string to list, so that's pretty straightforward. We have a variable s that's assigned the word uh, spam. Um, and then um, we're trying to create a new variable that, are going to, that is going to convert this string into a list using the function list. So if I just try uh, to do this one, I copy uh, and paste it here and I print and say what is T and you can clearly see that now each letter uh, is actually a element of that list. Let's try uh, to break a string into words. Uh, that's also quite useful. Uh, we can use the function split. Now you will see that when you read a text file uh, in the future that will be also quite useful uh, to use this function split. There is also a function called strip, um, and that one is um, useful when you have to remove some characters um, that you don't really want. So here we can see how um, this um, <coughs> string here has automatically been uh, converted into a list f. Um, I am panning for goal with each word, as long as there is a space, uh, it will split and create then one element every time you do have a space. Another important data type are dictionaries. Dictionaries work a little bit similar to a list. They are, however, more general. And the indices of a dictionary can be of any type. In a dictionary, you store data value in a specific relationship, which is called key value pairs. So for each key, you have a pair. Uh, in other words, um, for every item that you have, you may have a definition. I'll give an example in a second later. Dictionaries are unordered. They are changeable, so you can change the values. But they do not allow for duplicates. So again, it's a single pair relationship. Dictionaries are written with curly brackets, so uh, unlike the square brackets for the list, and have keys and values. So you have one key, and you have a value for that particular key. An example here. Um, for a car, so I have a variable here uh, called this dictionary is equal to, I open the curly bracket, I have my first key, brand, and I have my first value, Ford. The second one is the model, and um, the value is Mustang, and the third, third one is year with the number 1964. So you see here we have numbers, here we have text, and uh, as I mentioned, the indices can be of any type. Now, if I want to know, for instance, uh, and I ask, what is the brand of the car? So I can call this dictionary, and print is a function within uh, Python built in, and I say this dictionary called brand, and it would return me Ford. All right, in this example, I'd like to show you how a dictionary works. So I have taken a very simple example here uh, of a dictionary called tel for telephone, uh, and we have only two uh, individuals here, Jack and John. Um, so we would uh, enter them with those uh, brackets here. Um, and then if you want to get the phone number from, uh, say, Jack, uh, that's how you would uh, get it. 
and it would return you the value that goes with that particular key. Uh, so you can see this is a one one to one uh, relationship uh, here. If I add John, you can see that as well. It returns that one number. In Python, the order of operation is very important, and this is actually true for many other programming language. There is something, an acronym called PEMDAS, where P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponent, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. And this really is the order in which operation should be conducted. And so as a simple example here, I'd like to show you two um, operation. We have 2 times 3 plus 4. Uh, and the first one, what do we do? We look at uh, the order of operations. Multiplication here uh, come before addition. So we first uh, multiply 2 and 3 together. So that's 6. And then afterwards, we add 4, and that's where we get 10. Now, if we had here a parenthesis, um, that would be different. We would first do the parenthesis here, 3 plus 4 equals 7. And then we multiply this by 2, and then we have 14. So it's very important uh, that you keep uh, track of uh, this order of operation, uh, especially when you're using, let's say, mathematical or uh, statistical functions. Commenting your code is a uh, very good practice in programming. Let's suppose that someone wants to reuse your code in the future, uh, but there is no comment. So uh, th that programmer will have to figure out uh, what your code is about. Um, so one thing that you always want to try to do is to give description of what the code does. Um, so typically, at the top of a code, um, you would explain what the purpose of the code is in one or two lines, or maybe a little bit more, but not too long. Um, the possible inputs of your code, uh, the expected outputs, of course, what it does, I'd explain that, and maybe who wrote that code? When was that uh, code written? Was there any changes that were made to that code? And if so, when were those uh, changes made? So in um, <coughs> Python, uh, the symbol uh, for commenting is this one, and you would put that, so this would be on the, uh, on the, on the uh, top of your code. Uh, and then um, you can also comment within your code, but of course not commenting every line of code. Uh, typically, you would try to comment uh, before you have a chunk of code that does a specific operation, for instance. Um, so anyways, that is a very uh, good practice, uh, something that we will, of course, uh, emphasize throughout this class.